Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Jimini. Thought uh, in between me eating breakfast this morning and then uh, getting ready for the gym, I'd show you a quick function table and also assign you your homework for tonight. So, if I take a look at this function table, I see 7, 40, 6, we don't know, 10, 58, X, we don't know, Y equals 130, and then here is your homework. This one right down here. So, Looking at this table doesn't help me unless I see the function, so I take a look at the function here. It is y equals 2 times 3x minus 1. This looks like to me I could use a distributive property because inside the parentheses there's nothing I can combine. These are not like terms, so I would distribute or share that 2 with everything inside of the parentheses. So, first problem I'm going to look at is this one here where the y is unknown. So I see that x is equal to 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the 6 in for wherever I see an x in my function. So I don't know what y is. That's what I'm solving for. So I say y is equal to 2 times 3. Now there's 3x, which means three. T it's understood to be 3 times x. I have 3 x's there. Now I know that x is equal to 6, so it becomes 3 times 6 minus 1. Okay, I'm now going to look what's inside the parentheses first. I see that I can multiply 3 times 6, so I'm going to bring everything I don't use down. So it's still y equals 2 times, well, 3 times 6 is 18, so I have 18 minus 1 inside the parentheses. Now, I can do this one of two ways. I look inside the parentheses. We can use it to probably say 2 times 18 minus 2 times 1, but I'm going to make this a little easier on myself because 18 and 1 are like terms. There's no variable in here. Uh, I can combine these. So I just simply do the operation of subtraction. 18 minus 1 is 17. Okay, I'm going to put parentheses around it still because I need to multiply that by 2. So the parentheses show, show me that I'm going to multiply these two. And that is y equals 2 times 17 is 34. So according to this, y is equal to 34. Now, if you remember from the other day, just because I get an answer, I want to check it. So now that I know what y is, and I know that x was equal to 6, I'm going to plug in y. Now, so now my function reads like this, 34 is equal to, now I go back up to this one, and I'm just going to rewrite this, 2 times 3 times 6 minus 1. Okay, I am hoping that this side equals 34, because really what I want is I want both sides of the equation to equal 34. So I have 34 is equal to 2 times 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 1. Okay, now again, I could use a distributive property, but I'm just going to, because the operation of the terms inside are like terms, I'm going to combine them. 18 minus 1 is 17. Times that by 2, that is equal to 34. I have 34 equals 2 times 17. 34 equals 34. I have a check. So now I can go up here with confidence and say that when x is equal to 6, y will be equal to 34. Okay. Now, I always find that solving for y is a bit more complex. So, if y is equal to 130, I need to solve for x. All I'm going to do is go back up to my original function. y equals 2 times 3 times x minus 1 in parentheses. Okay, I'm going to go down here and rewrite this function. y is equal to 2 times in parentheses. 3 times x minus 1, close parentheses. Now that I know what y is, I am going to substitute in for it. So now I have 130 is equal to 2 times, in parentheses, 3 times x minus 1. Now remember yesterday in class we talked about this is almost like a wall. And whatever I do to one side of the wall, I need to do the other side. So looking at this first, I see that I must try to simplify this. I can't do anything with 3 times x minus 1. So here is where I can use my distributive property. 
I am going to use either the rainbow method or the arrow method and I'm going to multiply that too by everything inside the parentheses. This operation here will stay the same. So now I still have my 130 on this side of the equation. It's going to be equal to now. Now I go 2 times 3x. So I had 3x's. I'm going to double the amount of x's I have now. So now I have 6x's. Okay. The operation stays subtraction. Now I have 2 minus or 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. So now I have simplified this. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to isolate this variable. First thing I need to do is I need to get rid of the 2. I need to create a balance here. Remember we talked about yesterday, the 2 kind of wants to go home and be with the 130 because they are like terms. I have a whole number here. This is a coefficient. These are not alike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. Now to get rid of it, I must do the inverse or the opposite. So instead of subtracting 2, because if I subtract 2 more, I'll just have 4 more over here. So instead I'm going to add, and whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. I have 130 plus 2 is 132. This cancels out. If, I have, if I've lost 2, I've gained 2, now I have nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm at a 0, I'm even. And that is equal to 6x. Now, the problem is I need to find out what 1x equals. So I need to evaluate for just 1x, not 6x's. So what I'm going to do is this says 6 times x. Remember what we did up here, we did the inverse to get rid of that 2. I'm going to do the same thing and do the inverse to get rid of that coefficient of 6 because I'm solving for 1x, not 6. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. That leaves me with x is equal to. Now, I can't do 132 divided by 6 in my head. I don't have to. I can do it over here on paper. I have 132 divided by 6. I put my little multiplication sign there. 6 is not going to 1. 6 goes into 13 twice. That gives me 12. I subtract. That's a 1. I bring down the 2. 6 times what gives me 12? 6 times 2. So that is telling me that x is equal to 22. Now remember, just because I have an answer doesn't necessarily mean it's right. I need to plug now my value for x into the original function. So we had y, or y now is 130, we said, is equal to 2 times in parentheses, 3 times, now it's 22 minus 1. Okay, we know in the parentheses here, we do multiplication first. Or according to PEMDAS, remember parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and subtraction. I'm going to do that first. Now, I could use, again, distributive property, but it becomes more cumbersome. So I'm just going to write down 130 is equal to 2 times, 3 times 22, 22 times 2 is 44, I add another 22, that gives me 66, it's a sloppy 6, apologize, 66 minus 1, okay, now I have, in parentheses, 66 minus 1, I can use derivative property, but because these are like terms, I'm going to combine them first, so the 130 stays the same, 2 times, 66 minus 1 is 65. Okay, so I have 130 equals 2 times 65. I don't can't do that in my head, so I go down here in my little workspace. 65 times 2, that gives me 10. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1, that gives me 13. Oh, yes. 130. Check 130. So I am correct. So I can go back here. Remember, I was solving for x and i said down here in some of my work x is equal to 22 so when y equals 130 x is going to equal 22. your homework for tonight is to use the same function which is right there so that if x is equal to 17 what is y equaling all right take care have a great day